When you discover something that nourishes your soul and brings you joy, care enough about yourself to make room for it in your life. Welcome to 7 Minutes for Yourself. I'm Christina Ina, and I'm so glad you've joined me for what I believe will be 7 of the most enriching minutes of your day. Let's take this time to reconnect with ourselves and improve our well-being. In today's episode of 7 Minutes for Yourself, we discuss the personality traits that define a self-actualized person. Have a listen. So in terms of the definition, we're going to pull from Abraham Maslow's classic definition in his 1943 article about this. He describes self-actualization like this. The tendency might be phrased as the desire to become more and more what one is, to become everything that one is capable of becoming. So self-actualization is a need. And as the army slogan back in the day used to talk about it, join the army, be all that you can be. In other words, we want to become everything that we are capable of becoming. Self-actualization is the top need on a hierarchy that Maslow describes. So it's a pyramid. It's the highest and fifth level. So on the bottom, we have our basic physical needs like food, shelter, clothing. The next level up is our safety needs. The third level is our need for belonging or affiliation with other people. The fourth level is esteem. That can be self-esteem or it could also be the esteem of others. And at the top of the pyramid, once you've met all the other needs below it, people can pursue the need of self-actualization. So this is clearly a need. And I want to go on and quote a different part of that article. Even if all these other needs are satisfied, he's talking about the rest of them below it on the pyramid, we may still often, if not always, expect that a new discontent and restlessness will soon develop. Unless the individual is doing what he is fitted for, a musician must make music, an artist must paint, a poet must write if he is to be ultimately happy. What a man can be, he must be. This need we may call self-actualization. So clearly, this is a need. Now, why do I keep emphasizing that? Well, a lot of times I hear in general conversation on the internet and in in social circles and professional settings, that self-actualization is somehow something that you achieve. In other words, it's a state of being that you finally arrive at, like some type of enlightenment. Like you get better and better and you're so talented and so amazing that you have, quote, self-actualized. And I actually don't think it's very helpful to think about self-actualization this way because Maslow and many other people almost always talk about this as a need, a desire inside of us. And we can't measure the pursuit of that desire by some kind of fame or status or public success or money that we earn because we can be pursuing a need and nobody else really has to acknowledge it, but we're still pursuing that need, that desire inside of us. For example, the famous painter Vincent van Gogh You know, he's a genius level painter, obviously working very hard to paint, but he sold almost no paintings during his lifetime. And it was only later that he had that fame and public praise. And he didn't experience any of it, but he was still pursuing that need that was put inside him. So I think it's really helpful to think about self-actualization this way. It's about that personal growth and pursuing the kind of, the kind of work that we are fitted for. And it could be painting, and it could be making music, it could be being a parent, like being a mother. That's all part of this. And when we're pursuing that need, we probably feel pretty darn good because we're doing work that seems fitted to us. There's a great documentary movie that I think shows this. It's called Jiro Dreams of Sushi. I saw it on Netflix not long ago. Jiro Ono is the most famous sushi chef in the world, really. He's actually still making sushi in his 90s. He's been doing this for over 70 years, and he is completely obsessed with making sushi. And here is a quotation from Jiro Ono in that movie. He said, you have to fall in love with your work. You must dedicate your life to mastering your skill. That is the key to happiness. 
While I'm making the sushi, I feel victorious. That's how it makes me feel. So when we see someone doing work at such high levels, and he's world famous, you can't get a, you can't eat, eat his restaurant. It's booked a year in advance. When you see people doing work at this level, they are pursuing that need that is inside of them. And he even talks about how he just has to make sushi. He dreams of sushi, which is the name of the movie. However, he's also famous. He's also financially successful. He's also really well known and gets praise from everybody. But keep this in mind. He was making sushi and digging into that need long before any of that. He only really became famous in the last 20 or so years. So self-actualization is not tied to fame and fortune and money. That concludes today's episode of 7 Minutes for Yourself. Please take a moment to rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts. Today and every day with your kiddo is a gift. Enjoy it. Thanks for tuning in.